So you can eat anywhere from three to six protein containing meals per day and expect to see very similar muscle growth. And so you really think that this study is worthy of even talking about? There's five people in each group. Coach Greg, today's video features none other than Mr. Jeff Nippert, the worst nutrition mistakes every lifter makes. I've done a variety of videos on this exact topic, feel like I'm an expert on it, and so I can't wait to critique Mr. Jeff Nippert. In this video, I'll be sharing some of the worst nutrition mistakes pretty much every lifter makes at some point, myself included. And so Jeff himself admits that even he made these mistakes, and if he'd only known these tips 10 years ago when he first started lifting, he would have made significantly better gains. The first mistake most people make is thinking that you can force feed muscle growth. You can't. I gotta tell ya, I'm loving it so far. You can't just eat big to get big. So many people think, if only I bulk and cut, I'm gonna gain so much muscle. It's not true. If you eat big, you're gonna get big, but you're gonna get big and fat. Now, the reason I say that you can't force feed muscle growth is that studies consistently show that when you overfeed someone with a large caloric surplus, they gain disproportionately more fat than they do muscle. And I mean, I can't agree more, 100% agree with this. If you overeat calories, you're not building a bunch of muscle, it's just gonna turn into fat. Now, remember, you have to eat enough calories. And so I'm not saying you should cut, I'm not saying you should try to maintain single digit body fat. But once you're consuming enough calories, adding in more, not going to make any difference. These researchers split 47 elite athletes into two groups. One group ate in a relatively large caloric surplus, and one group ate in a relatively small caloric surplus. And so notice, 620 extra calories and no significant difference in lean mass in compared to muscle. But look at that graph in fat, it's huge! It's way more than the muscle. And so the extra 620 calories that they added, it didn't add into any significant amount of muscle, but it added to a lot more body fat. And remember, all that extra fat you gain, you're then going to have to cut. And what do you think is going to happen when you cut when you're in a calorie deficit? A lot harder to build muscle. So rather than going through all that nightmare, yo-yo dieting, bulking, cutting, just main gain. But understand what main gain means. 15% body fat. Not single digits, not Tristan Lee, not a shredded G-shred model. A healthy body fat percentage. Maintain that, continue to train, you're going to build a muscle. If you'd like to do a leaner bulk, a smaller 5-10% to surplus would be better. And if you're trying to prioritize fat loss while still building muscle, a slight caloric deficit in this zone would be best. And so if you're currently eating about 2,500 calories, 5% more than that, it's only 125 extra calories. And so for most people, probably not going to gain a lot of body fat. But if you add in 10% of calories or more, a lot of that is just going to end up as fat. To be clear, I'm not saying that aggressive bulks are necessarily a bad thing. So-called dreamer bulks have become something of a rite of passage in the lifting world. And so yeah, if you go on an aggressive bulk, put on a lot of weight, of course you're going to get stronger. You're changing your leverages. The bar doesn't have to go as low to touch the chest. But once you you diet that extra body fat off, you're going to lose a lot of the strength gains because it's not from the added muscle, but from the added body fat. But they can also make your life more difficult the next time you want to cut down. And in my coaching experience, just end up not being worth it for most people. Exactly. You then have to diet down. You perhaps develop body dysmorphia. And so it's not worth it. And so trust me, trust Jeff, the number one mistake you can make is dirty bulking. Okay, the second mistake most people make is not realizing that most supplements are overrated. Okay, the second mistake he says is that most supplements are overrated, and I'm going to have to agree. People think that they take supplements and they're suddenly going to turn into Chris Bumstead. But the harsh reality is no matter what supplement you're taking, probably going to help maybe 5%. Now listen, I'm not saying not to take supplements. I'm not saying that 5% isn't worth it. For me, competitive of cyclists or a bodybuilder, 5% can make the difference between 1st and 10th place. But it's not going to work the way PDs do. It's not starms, it's not steroids, it's not growth hormone, and so don't expect supplements to be magic. But still, my opinion is not that people are making mistakes on creatine, caffeine, and protein. How is this in the top 4 nutrition mistakes that people make? You really think people are making the mistake of not taking creatine? That they think that if they take creatine, they're going to turn into Chris Bumstead? I think people know that creatine does in fact work, but it's not going to put on 10 pounds of muscle. He states, probably going to put on about 2 pounds of muscle. Most studies show that taking creatine should result in a roughly 2 to 3 pound increase in lean mass. That's not bad. To put on 2 pounds extra muscle for just taking creatine? That's great. 
And caffeine. I'm pretty sure that people know it gives them energy. They can work out harder. You work out harder than last time is going to help you to build muscle. And so whether you're taking it as coffee or caffeine or perhaps a pre-workout such as hardcore stim pre-workout, I think we all know that caffeine or pre-workouts can help to give energy and they do in fact work. And what about protein? Well, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. How many of you didn't know that that is a great goal to shoot for? Does that mean you can't build muscle if you have 0.9 or 0.8 or 0.5? No. But if you're getting in one gram of protein per pound of body weight, you don't need to get more. If you double that, it's not going to help. But do realize that protein from animal sources is in fact better than from plant sources. And so if you aren't consuming any products from animals, perhaps you're vegan, do consume more protein than last time. And that about one gram per pound. This eight-week training study found that a group taking creatine gained 1.1 kilograms or 2.2 pounds more lean mass than a group taking placebo. And so I don't know. Two to three pounds sounds pretty good. I don't know if people actually expect creatine to transform them into Wolverine, that it's as good as steroids. Like, did any of you actually think that? But I still think Jeff is right. I think people still overestimate it. They probably think it's going to add five pounds of muscle, most likely two to three, which to me, it's not bad. What one thing Jeff doesn't mention here is that if you're not eating foods from a variety of food groups, that if you're short on micro or macronutrients, not consuming enough calories, your body fat is too low, that that can lead to a decline in your levels of testosterone. How come it's so hard to find everything I want? Am I just blind? Yes, I am. And so with a test boost supplement like G-Test or 3-Test, you can dramatically increase your testosterone levels. Andrew Huberman on the Joe Rogan podcast stated that some of these supplements can add up to one to 200 nanograms per deciliter. Those two herbal supplements together can give a significant boost in free and active testosterone. So you said Tungat Ali can give you 100 to 200? Yeah, about that. And so in total, you can expect to potentially increase testosterone by two to 400 nanograms per deciliter. That's a significant difference in your testosterone. Right, most people are gonna see about a three to 400 point increase. And so unlike test boosters of old, these can make a significant difference. Obviously, I strongly encourage you to eat from all four food groups. To not over diet and not consume enough calories. And if you're making Maintaining single digit body fat, unless you're one of the elites, most likely going to suffer with less energy and likely not going to build as much muscle. And so to me, a huge mistake that perhaps Jeff could have listed would have been that people need to consume enough calories. And if you don't, expect to have decline in testosterone levels and a much harder time building muscle. However, compared to a bodybuilding steroid cycle, which can add upwards of 10 to 20 pounds of lean mass in just a month or two, it's also worth tempering your expectations. And so a lot of you probably tempted to use steroids, I'm telling you, they're not that effective. For some of the hyper responders of the world, the IPV pro bodies, yeah, maybe some of them can gain 20 pounds in two months. Rarely anyone. I personally never gained close to 20 pounds in two months. Probably half of that. And remember, once you go off of those steroids, you're going to probably lose half of the gains or even more. And so the net result, many people overestimate the benefits of performance enhancing drugs. They do, of course, make a difference, but they're not going to turn you into an IPV pro bodybuilder by just using them. And so for me, a major mistake would be overestimating the benefits of performance enhancing drugs or using them in the first place, thinking that you're going to actually keep all those gains. And so he separates number three, saying you don't need a super high protein diet to build muscle. I think we already covered this. We talked about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. More than that, not going to help. And if you eat a lot less than that, under a half a gram of protein per pound of body weight, expect not to build as much muscle. Personally, I'm still cutting at the moment and I eat 150 grams of protein per day at 165 pounds body weight. So that's about 0.9 grams of protein per pound of body weight for me. And so think of it. Jeff is on a cut. He's consuming 0.9 grams of protein per pound of body weight. 150 grams. The guy's 165 pounds. And so if Jeff is eating less than one gram of protein per pound of body weight, do you really think you need to eat more? Jeff's a natty bodybuilder. He's done the research. He's consuming 0.9. And so I think if you got one gram of protein per pound, you got sit covered. The fourth mistake a lot of people make is misunderstanding meal frequency. A recent study from 2021 found that there was no significant difference in muscle gained between a group eating three meals a day versus six meals a day. So you can eat anywhere from three to six protein containing meals per day and expect to see very similar muscle growth. Jeff, the study had five people in each group, followed them for eight weeks. Five people in each group. 
And so you really think that this study is worthy of even talking about? There's five people in each room. And so you got five people, they're eating three meals a day. Five other people eating six meals a day. They follow them for eight weeks. There's no significant change in the amount of fat, muscle, all this stuff after eight weeks. Really shocker. With only five people in comparison, you know the difference it would have to make to come out as being statistically significant? It'd have to be huge and dramatic. Now, had there been 50 people in group, now that would show a serious difference. And what do we know from the history of the research? We know that there are up to five opportunities per day for muscle protein synthesis to occur. And so the recommended amount of meals you should eat per day, it's five. Now, granted, there's a larger difference between eating one meal a day and two, two meals per day and three. And as you go from three to four and four to five, the difference are marginal. They're not a huge difference. And so my advice based on my research, you should try to consume three to five meals a day with protein for optimal fat loss and or muscle building potential. And so after all of this, he still says, look, for fat loss, one to six meals per day is perfectly fine. Yeah, but we're trying to hold on muscle when we're burning fat. And so eating one meal a day for fat loss isn't as good as eating three to five meals a day for fat loss. Why? Because if you only eat one meal a day, you're not going to have as much muscle. You're going to have a lower BMR, lower neat, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And so why would we do that? The video is called Worst Nutrition Mistakes. And so if you start fasting, only eating one meal a day, although you can burn fat because yeah, calories in, calories out, you're going to lose more muscle. And so why would you do that? I saw no discussion on fasted cardio or fasted training. My personal belief is that eating is better overall, but for some people, if you have the energy, it's still okay to do it fasted, but you're not going to burn off more fat. And so if you're struggling to get through your workouts, you're not doing as hard a cardio, you can't lift as heavy weights when you're fasted, then it's certainly not of benefit. For most people, having a couple meals in your system before you're going to train is going to result in you lifting heavier weights. And if you lift heavier weights, you're going to get greater gains. Also, a huge mistake that most people make is crash dieting, losing weight too fast. If you're losing weight greater than 1% of your body weight a week, you're probably losing a lot of muscle. And so the slower you lose the weight, the better. Remember, 95% of diets fail. And so if you're just crash dieting year after year, it's not good. Stop yo-yo dieting and consider trying to main gain. My best advice or tip to lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life, it's doing steady state zone two cardio. It's not going to be too hard. You can recover from it. It's going to allow you to burn more calories. It's going to lower your set point, allow you to maintain a leaner physique. Another mistake that people make is trying to eat perfect. Every time you're trying to build muscle, lose weight, you think you have to eat all perfect foods, relying on your willpower. Chicken, broccoli, and rice, there's only so long you can do it. And so my advice, the diet you should follow is the one that you enjoy. Pick up my freaking cookbook, Low Calorie Delicious Meals for the Big Eater. They're high in protein, high in fiber. They're going to allow you to feel full. Don't stop eating all the food you love. Just make them lower in calories. Pick up the book. Click the link in the description. Code Greg, 10% off. Another huge mistake that people make is they underestimate how many calories they're eating. They don't have a clue. They're not tracking the oils, the sauces, and so on. And so they're saying, yeah, I eat 1,200 calories a day, and I never lose weight. I was in a calorie deficit is it for three years and I never lost any weight. No, you didn't. You're a freaking moron. That's what's going on. At properly track your calories. And what do the studies say? That most people underestimate the calories they're eating by 30 to 50%. And so if you think you're eating 1,200, you're probably eating 15 to 1,800. Another big problem, people, they skip meals. They'll think, oh, I just won't eat till supper. That'll do it. And so what happens is by not eating, your ghrelin rises dramatically. And once you start eating, you can't stop. It's a feeding frenzy. And so please don't think that skipping meals is a good thing. And also to the same extent, don't think that you can just eat strictly all week and then have a cheat day. Yay, it's cheat Friday. Yay, it's my cheat day Saturday. I'm going to consume 8,000 calories and undo all the work I did the entire week. Also, before I go, I want to remind you, it's okay to have artificial sweeteners. I'm even drinking a diet Pepsi right now, caffeine free. Studies actually show that consuming non-nutritive sweetened beverages cause you to lose more weight, you feel more satisfied, less hungry than even consuming water. And so if you're not consuming artificial sweeteners and you're drinking water and you replace some of that water with diet Pepsi, for example, the studies show that you're going to lose and maintain more of the weight loss. And so you're thinking, no, artificial sweeteners are bad. My gut microbiome, bull freaking shit. Stop listening to height. Listen to actual studies, studies with a large amount of people that show significant differences. Ending it here. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm. Like the video if you liked it. Come on, give me a like. You know, 
can do it. Also, watch the bloops, and if you can't afford supplements, cookbooks, all that stuff, please head over to my website. I'll give you a free diet and training program. It's over 50 pages. And so why not do that? First and last name, email address, voila, going right to you. Cookbooks, training books, coaching plans by me and my team, the Circle Diet book, my life's work, how to lose weight, keep it off. Gotta get it. And until next time, I am out.